So Jimmy Dore came out recently, hard against Carlos Maza for his attacks on YouTube. And while I think that's great, Sam Cedar wasn't very happy with that, and went on what I would consider an unhinged rant. Let's take a look. And Sam pauses a lot in between saying things, so I'll be cutting that all out. That's why you'll see a bunch of jump cuts. So Stephen Gr- Crowder is uh, one of those guys who has been um, avoiding, you know, any real debates on policy. He has an interesting uh, program. And, and I just heard the other day from, um, from a friend who I don't talk to too often. Her son said to her, hey, I heard uh, Sam might debate Crowder. I hope he does because that guy is horrible. And the kid is a kid. I don't know. He's like 14, 15. And this is the thing that's problematic about Steven Crowder. So this is where Sam starts. And strangely, he actually destroys his own setup as Sam goes on this whole Crowder bad because think of the children old as dirt tactic. Yet the first thing he relates to us is a story about a 14 year old saying Crowder is horrible. Thus, Sam destroys his own fear-mongering narrative before it even begins. F- minus for persuasion, Sam. Every time he does one of these um, rebuttals to um, Carlos um, Maza, which, you know, of course, uh, you should be doing rebuttals if you're, if you're, if you're, you disagree uh, politically. But he always, like, sort of buttons them with, like, he's gay. Um, it's just, it's just gratuitous. Um, not that there's non-gratuitous, but it's just gay bashing and, um, and racism. Ad hominems are not arguments. Well, I mean, ad hominems are fine too. It's just that when you make it about someone being gay or Mexican, what happens is, is you're sending a message to those little, uh, kids, those teenagers who watch you, you know, if it's ad hominem, somebody says like, oh, look at Sam Cedar, four eyes or... Uh, this guy's, you know, uh, condescending or he's a shill or whatever it is. There's no kids out there who hear that and then go and ostracize, bully, beat up other kids because they're condescending. But if they're gay, if they're Mexican, that's what it breeds. Maybe you've read the paper and you realize that there have been two murders of transgender women in the past two weeks in Dallas, half a dozen I think it is now five, maybe in the past two or three years in Dallas. Yes, that's right. The danger of Steven Crowder being a jerk is that he's convincing children to go out and commit hate crimes. That's Sam's insane argument. Crowder being an a-hole and mocking someone's sexual orientation turns into murder. I think we're missing some steps between being an a-hole and murder, but that's just me. I don't think it's somebody who uh, listens to Steven Crowder. Oh, okay. So maybe he's pulling back from that crazy accusation and we can all just calm down. But if Steven Crowder keeps working at it and keeps preaching like this, maybe someday he'll succeed and be able to reach somebody who does that. I mean, why else? Right. I mean, if you're going to go on and attack somebody, essentially attack gay people, attack Mexicans, what is your end goal? Your goal is to get rid of them. Right. And so it's a success for you. If one of your students goes out and beats the gay out of somebody. (laughs) Never mind. Sam's gone full blown. Crowder wants homosexuals and Mexicans removed from the country or assaulted, or killed. (laughs) Wow, what an insane take. What a Herculean leap of logic Sam's making. Now, even as I just said in my last main channel video, I don't agree with Crowder mocking Maz's sexual orientation. And I'm not particularly any sort of Steven Crowder fan. But come on, Sam. This is the way of madness. The claim that Crowder being an a-hole in a very juvenile way means he wants people murdered? This is slippery slope fallacy at its best here. You know, with Sam just so concerned about the poor, impressionable youths watching Steven Crowder and acting violently based on what Crowder says, 
I mean, <laughs> there's obviously no way that Sam would ever advocate for anything remotely close to violence, right? I mean, that would just be completely hypocritical if Sam was advocating some kind of violence against his political opponents. I mean, come on, there's just no way Sam would ever do that. I am reluctant to uh, promote violence of any type, which is why it gives me such great pleasure to promote this video. Uh, one is of Nigel Farage getting milkshaked, and one is a picture of Sargon of Arkad getting milkshaked. Well, here's the picture of uh, Sargon of Arkad wearing the Arcadian milkshake um, covering the traditional uh, milkshakian uh, uh, covering. He's been anointed. Um, he's been anointed. Boom! Nice! Nice underhanded motion yeah. there. Very good. This is why I think this is so appropriate. This is why I think it's so, such an appropriate form of protest. Now, some people say, oh, it's just not appropriate. I think this is, there couldn't be anything more appropriate than this. It's meant to make them humiliated and look silly and I think this is incredibly effective. It's also meant to make them like uh, aware that like you can't, you're accountable in some fashion. This is just a milkshake, but you're accountable. Every time you throw food on a fascist, an angel gets its wings. Yeah, there it is. Over the shoulder, gets into his, onto his hands. That's a well, that's actually, frankly, it's a, a nice spiral. That is a beautiful pass. I mean, yeah, that's you know, the look, NBA, NFL. Because look at that. Perfect. It goes over the defender's head. Exactly. Uh, which is the uh, the police officer. And it lands right into uh, Gates' hands. Hits you know him what's right really back. Sad? Yeah. He Talk drops about it. Drop ball. <laughs> that's really well done. I mean, as, in terms of a toss. I mean, you got to. Um, and is that. Are we clear that that's a milkshake or. Is it soda? An unspecified drink is yeah. what I'm seeing yeah. reported. Anything could be a milkshake if you believe hard enough. That's right. There mm -hmm. you go. Well, I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't know that it's a crime. Uh, the person, the woman who threw it, uh, I believe, has been charged with battery. Battery. So uh, there you go. Know that uh, that's the price you might have to pay. Right. <laughs> oh wait, no, he totally knows. Oh, you know, they're just mocking it. It's not like they want it to be used as a political intimidation tactic. Funny is if this gets this meme gets uh, widespread enough, you can start to just have your milkshake near some of these people, and they'll be nervous enough, and you right. won't even have to throw it. Right. It's, oh wait, that's exactly what they want it to be. Well, I mean, you know, it's not like Sam is pushing for an even more disgusting and vile version of milkshaking someone. Like mixing your own bodily fluids in with the milkshake. You know, that would just be, you know, too, too unhygienic. It's a step too far. And then also, look, there's also um, spit takes. Uh, now, I'm not, I'm not recommending it, but it is quite possible that you could be in a situation where you're drinking your milkshake and uh, let's say a, a certain uh, politician is a little fascistic, says something that just blows your mind. A spit take is a very natural reaction uh, that one could not, it's almost, it's like- uh, Involuntary. Involuntary. <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, but wait, you know, these are just jokes. These are just jokes. Sam isn't going to directly advocate for anyone to assault another individual. I mean, he wouldn't go so far as to say that he would actually create and sponsor a product that would be used to assault people and commit a crime. I mean, Sam would never do that. It's nice that you can walk around with a milkshake and feel patriotic now, like you're ready to be a patriot. I mean, I would like to see maybe somebody market it. Maybe that's what we should be doing. Maybe that should be uh, some merch. Majority Report if, milkshake. Uh, yeah, if you have a dairy uh, company and want us to brand your milkshake, I'd that's love right. to be the face of it. And or it doesn't have to be... vegan dairy. It doesn't have to be cold. It could be like a protein drink, I feel like. That way you could keep it. Uh, and the key would be the packaging. Because you want to be able to carry it around in your pocket. And then when you need to, just rip off the top. A nice Not big, just a whole, but like a top, big open too. top. And yeah. just rip off the top like a like a rip away bag almost. And then almost there should be like a function like where you can squeeze it so you can make it a projectile. Right. 
yes, Sam is just so concerned about people saying words, but not at all concerned about actually assaulting people and what kind of precedent that sends when all these people on one side of the political aisle are cheering on and advocating for people to throw stuff at politicians they don't like. I mean, what kind of crazy person would conceive of the dangerous precedent that sets? I mean, it's just milkshakes, right? It's just milkshakes. It could never escalate. I mean, that would be absurd. Who, who would argue that something could escalate out of throwing milkshakes at, at someone? You know, a sane person, they argue that mocking someone's sexual orientation, no, that's going to escalate into murder. But, you know, actually assaulting someone, no, that's, you know, that's nothing. That's nothing. You know, when Sargon made his, you know, I wouldn't even rape you joke, that damages the fabric of society. Oh, but assaulting someone, no, that's just totally fine. Because the issue about um, rape jokes is not about a political culture, but it is about actually a one-to-one. It's not symbolic at all. It has real import to the culture. There is no damage to the political culture, no material damage to the political culture that people make a symbolic protest. There is real damage to the culture when people start to make it acceptable to joke about rape like it's not a big deal. I mean, I'm sure if like a bunch of white males were throwing milkshakes at minority women who were just advocating for some kind of social justice cause and Dave Rubin and Steven Crowder were cheering this on their shows, I'm sure Sam Cedar wouldn't call them horrible racists. No, no, no. He would say, oh, you know, it's fine. It's just milkshakes. It's totally fine. Yeah, I'm sure that would be what Sam Cedar would say. Well, now that we've firmly established that Sam Cedar is a total hypocrite who has no principles and is just completely given into tribalism, Let's get back to his insane take on Crowder. And so uh, Maz has um, complained to YouTube about it publicly because he gets a lot of harassment for being gay. And I don't know what the solution is to this. Obviously, you could demonetize his entire channel. He can keep doing what he's doing, but you can demonetize it. Like you're not silencing anybody by completely demonetizing a channel. First of all, Maza wasn't receiving negative comments because he's gay. He was receiving negative comments because people think he has terrible opinions. But second, Sam completely ignores how Maza wasn't even happy with the demonetization and was demanding that Crowder's channel be removed completely. Kind of an important part of the story. There was a lot of people who were demonetized. <clears throat> Almost all politics were demonetized about a year and a half ago. And it sucked. It sucked. But if that's what it takes, let's do it. Yep, that's right. Sam's gone full-blown scorched earth. Or as we like to call, going full Daenerys. Just demonetize all political content on YouTube. Because some people are jerks. Just harm thousands of YouTubers because one guy at Vox Media is upset that he gets negative comments on his videos. How could anyone take Sam seriously after this? If it's unfair for the guy who is gay bashing to be demonetized and not us be demonetized, demonetize us too. Because at the end of the day, anything that we do here has no relevance. If our getting money from this allows him to keep doing what he's doing and getting paid for it. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, at least Sam is advocating for harming his own channel, too. Right? At least he's willing to take a principled stand. Right? Right? Well... Yes, TMBS is monetized, as is this channel. But even more so than Majority Report, which is over 90% memberships, TMBS is 99%, 99.9% uh, patrons and memberships. And I like it that way. Well, 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 well. Now we can see what Sam's great sacrifice is really worth. Nothing. 
It's just so easy for Sam to call for all of politics to be demonetized when 90% of the income from his show isn't from YouTube. It's from direct listener support. It's from memberships that are completely independent from YouTube. Can you imagine the gall Sam has to advocate for such widespread harm to the YouTube community when it barely even affects him? The great leftist, man of the people, Sam Cedar, is sitting up high on his hilltop, looking down on all the other YouTubers below, while dining on his succulent 90% membership dollars. And in between stuffing his face, he's like, Yes, we should flood this whole valley for the greater good of society. I'm so noble, making such a sacrifice, flooding the very land I too am on. Of course ignoring that his high safe hilltop would completely remove him from all harm. Now I listen to a lot of people I don't agree with on YouTube, but this... This is how you lose all respect for someone. If you're worried about the suppression of free speech, then the first thing you should be doing is saying, demonetize him and demonetize me, if that's the concern. Yeah, that's the literal opposite of free speech. If you're going to prevent people from being able to make money on YouTube for talking about politics, then only the wealthy and mainstream and already connected people will be able to thrive on the platform. I don't know what Sam's thinking. I mean, is he really that detached from reality? Not everyone has the ability to hold a normal 9 to 5 job and also make YouTube videos. Some people have, you know, other responsibilities in life they have to deal with. We're not going to get enough of the joking about uh, lisping and whatnot. And if it's a slippery slope, then let's just slide down it. Everybody gets demonetized. All politics demonetized. Let's do it. You know, Sam's whole point is idiotic. As much like himself, Crowder probably makes most of his money not even from YouTube ads, but from his own membership. In Sam's emotional and irrational outburst, he's advocating for something that won't even harm Crowder that much. Sam is like, let's demonetize all the smaller channels just to put a tiny notch on Crowder. Yeah, here's our old friend Jimmy Dore. So the whole reason Sam went on this insane rant is because Jimmy Dore correctly called out Maza and Legacy Media. Well, I'm sorry, Sam, that Jim is aware enough to take a step back and see what's happening on a broader scale. He is able to understand this is all just a cover for old media to attack YouTube because they don't like competition. They don't like independent voices being a part of the conversation. You'd think that someone like Sam, who was fired from his contributor job at MSNBC because Mike Cernovich took an out-of-context joke from 2009, would understand what Jimmy's talking about and wouldn't be in favor of online mobs dictating companies' behavior over jokes. Oh, wait, never mind. MSNBC hired him back. Whoops. Silly me. No wonder Sam doesn't care about old media attacking YouTube. Talk about hip hypocritical. 